uh, you're very welcome along to this video about Stalin and the background to the power struggle that he has between 1924 and 1929 to gain control of the Communist Party of USSR. Uh, so this video will look at uh, Stalin's early life, his role in the October Revolution, uh, the key positions that he accrued between 1917 to 1922, a little bit about his personality, a little bit about his history with uh, Trotsky, and also uh, the power that he had through the role of the Secretariat by 1924. Okay, so who was Stalin? Well, Stalin was born in, in Georgia uh, in 1878, and he had attended um, a Russian Orthodox seminary, did, uh, trained to be a priest between the age of uh, 15 and 20. Um, but when he was at the seminary, sorry, the seminary, he uh, became an atheist and uh, began to get uh, influenced or come across the ideas of Lenin and Karl Marx and uh, became a committed revolutionary. Um, in 1903, he'd been exiled to Siberia for revolutionary activities. He was raising money, racketeering uh, for uh, the Bolsheviks. He was also organizing trade union uh, disputes and uh, organizing strikes and things like that. In 1905, he meets Lenin for the first time. Then uh, in 1907, he's exiled following the Tiflis bank raid, um, which was a spectacular bank raid, bank raid um, in modern day Tbilisi. Um, he briefly escaped uh, from that uh, exile in Siberia to return to Petrograd in 1912, but was uh, betrayed by a, a spy within the Bolshevik party and sent back to Siberia again, uh, where he remained until the end of 1916, uh, when he's released uh, from uh, exile to join the Russian army, but uh, he doesn't actually get into the Russian army. And by the time we get to February and October, uh, Stalin is the only me leading member of the Bolshevik to be in Petrograd in March 1917, uh, during the uh, just shortly after the February Revolution. Okay, so his role in the October Revolution, he's a member of the Central Committee from 1912. He'd been co opted onto the Central Committee by Lenin. Lenin was quite impressed by Stalin's organization abilities. That's that's what he was great at. He was a great organizer. Um, so, as I said to you there, he was the first Bolshevik to arrive in Petrograd in March 1917. Because of that, he was the de facto leader of the Bolshevik faction until Lenin's return in April. Uh, and he resumed that leadership role after the July days when Lenin and Trotsky, or Lenin fled and Trotsky was in prison after the failure of the July days. Uh, during that time, he was editor of Pravda, uh, the Bolshevik newspaper. And uh, we see an important role that he played in October with uh, his support of Lenin during that meeting of the Central Committee, the CC Central Committee meeting. Uh, where the Bolsheviks voted 10 to 2 to um, have a revolution. Okay, so that's his role in October. From October to Lenin's uh, ill health, Lenin's ill health begins around 1921 22. Uh, well, during this time, as you know, he was Commissar, commissar for the Nationalities, uh, he was elected onto the Politburo which was the top seven position, or top seven men uh, within the Bolshevik party. Um, during the Civil War, he was focused on the nationalities question, and he was strongly opposed to independence. Being a Georgian, I suppose, he, uh, he was strongly opposed to independence and wanted uh, all the countries of the former Russian Empire to, to remain within the communist grip. Uh, in 1919, he was appointed head of the People's Commissariat for Workers and Peasants Inspection. Uh, quite a mouthful, so only ever used this RABKRIN um, acronym, RABKRIN. And this is important because it's it's a, a position which will give him oversight in all government departments, so it allowed him to see the workings and inner workings of all government departments. Uh, so nobody better than Stalin knew how uh, Russian government was working um, in the 1920s. And by 1922, Stalin was the only leading Bolshevik who was a member of all four key bodies in the party. The, uh, the party positions. He was a member of the Central Committee, the Politburo, the Org Bureau, and the Secretariat. And he acted as a liaison officer between these bodies. He would move from one to the other, carry messages and so on. And that gave him great power. Right. In 1922, we'll look at the Secretariat now. In 1922, Lenin was uh, appointed Stalin to the new position of uh, General Secretary of the Communist Party. 
Uh, and according to Orlando Fijes, who is an expert in the uh, in Stalin, he says this was arguably the worst mistake in the revolution's history, appointing Stalin as the general secretary, because this gave him responsibility for party membership and the appointment of local party secretaries. Now, the local party secretaries are important because they choose the delegates to go to the annual party congress. Therefore, if you could uh, control who the secretary was, you could control who goes to the Congress. And these Congresses are really, really important because at the annual party Congresses between 1924 and 1929, this is where the power struggle is played out between Stalin and the representatives of the left, Trotsky, and Zinoviev, Kamenev, and the people on the right, Tomsky and Bukharin. Okay? So it's at these party con uh, Congresses where, there, where there's votes and debates about the future of the Communist Party. And Stalin is able to control those debates through his control of the local party secretaries. Now, the, the big issue about uh, Stalin's uh, position as general secretary is Stalin's rivals didn't realise the power he had, had accrued through this position until it was too late. Now, we know that uh, Lenin had actually realised how much power Stalin had got through that position. Uh, and had said in his testament that uh, Stalin has too much power and must be removed from the position of General Secretary. However, we all know that Lenin's uh, testament was buried um, on agreement between Stalin and Ovev and Kamenev. They decided not to have it read out at the Party Congress. Right, so that whole uh, miscalculation about Stalin's power is, is summed up in that uh, and these quotations, so for example, he was known as the grey blur within the party, and Trotsky called Stalin the party's most eminent mediocrity. He's mediocre, he's just a grey blur. Uh, just a, a, what was this, uh, the nickname that they had for him? Uh, the commissar for um, filing or something like that. Okay, so they did not recognise the power that he had as the key point there. Right, just another couple of wee issues as well. I've got this uh, line here that says the outsider. And I seem to have uh, deleted some of this by accident with my finger there. But it says he was the only leading Bolshevik with a working class background. Okay, all of the other leaders uh, were middle class intellectuals. Um, Stalin is very much a working class man. He didn't learn Russian until he was 15. Okay, so he spoke with a Georgian accent. And I suppose this made him stand out, made him different. It probably made him... Uh, uh, feel that he wasn't the same as everybody else. It might have led to the fact that some people thought he was stupid when actually he was incredibly intelligent. Um, he didn't spend any time abroad with the other intellectuals of the party. So Zinoviev, Kamenev, Lenin, Trotsky, they'd all spent time abroad uh, in tea houses and various places discussing Marxist theory, whilst Stalin was in uh, Tiflis uh, carrying out bank raids and organising uh, racketeering uh, escapades so very very different background and he had a feeling that others in the party looked down on him for not being intellectual enough and this maybe feeds into the reason why he hates Trotsky and the reason why he is able to be so uh, ruthless in his extermination of the other key people in the party okay so I think I can leave it at that you can see that he's a very interesting character a very multifaceted character there's lots of lots of things going on with uh, Stalin's early life which are important in explaining how he is able to come to power by 1929